Hey colleagues, I'm Samantha from the Data Are All Right, and I am back with another helpful, goofy conga composer training video for anyone like me who is trying to learn the ropes and wants to make awesome, efficient, complex conga composer mail merges, especially for a nonprofit audience. Today, we're gonna to talk about what is a conga composer button and how can I learn all of the parts of it and be able to configure it for my own special flavors of merges. And we're gonna have some help from props, so get excited. I like to think of a conga composer solution kind of like a recipe. And like all recipes, at least on the internet, they usually start off with a bunch of uh, paragraphs that nobody ever reads. So I like to think of the beginning of this as like, the um, part of a food blog where someone's like, and then I went to the farmer's market and then I looked at all of the beautiful stuff and you're like, okay, all food blogs sound the same. I'm going to skip it. You don't really need to think about the beginning of this part, but what comes next is important, which is what object, or some of us like to think of objects as tabs. So what tab does this solution start from? So in the example I have here, it starts from the account or the household. You can make Conga Composer solutions start on any object, custom, standard, doesn't matter. You just have to know which one you're working with because it will become later. It will become important later in the solution because then we get to the meaty part of the solution, which is the queries. This one, only has one, but we're going to use it as a jumping off point to be able to learn more about how queries work. So let's say for our recipe, we're looking at a recipe for a fruit salad. We might want to pull in information about specific kinds of fruit. So for example, I brought my fruit kit from when I was a kid and we might say, I need to reach my hand <laughs> into the fruit salad and I only want grapes. So luckily we have a grape toy here and queries can be really powerful. You can be really specific. So you can say, actually, I don't just want grapes. I only want grapes that have a stem. The rest of the grapes we don't want to be included in our merge. We're only looking for grapes with stems. So as long as you have some sort of filter that you can look for for grapes with stems, then you can get as specific as you want or need in queries. And you can even query other kinds of data that are connected to your account or to the opportunities in your first query. So for example, if my database had tons of recipes in it, I could say, okay, now that we found the grapes, I wanna find more recipes that call for grapes. So I can find a recipe for wine or vinegar. I could find a recipe for um, this like chicken with grapes that my dad used to make when I was a kid, <laughs> or maybe for a grape salad. Um, so you can kind of take the result from one query, grapes, and pass it in as another query. Okay, now that we know we're dealing with grapes, we want to query all of our recipes and look for grapes. So you can have, I think, up to 50 queries in your composer solution. And each query can bring back thousands of records, depending on how you have it set up. So, okay, we got, <laughs> we got the, um, the blog story. We got the object type. We got the ingredients for the recipe, which is all of the data that you're going to call for in your queries. And then the last part that we have are called parameters. And I like to think about parameters as the presentation of the mail merge or the recipe. So in some cases, right, you want to put your fruit salad on a plate. So your, your parameter could say, okay, once you scoop your fruit salad, I want to put it on a plate. But we all know now, some restaurants can get really, really fancy with their presentation. You know, there are some restaurants where they, they serve you at your table. We might want that, and there might be a parameter for that. And then there are some, you know, it's really hip nowadays to put everything in a tortilla. So 
we could say take all of the ingredients and put them in a tortilla or we can even put them in a bun or make it an open face sandwich. Kanga Composer has like a gajillion different kinds of parameters. Some examples in the real world could be send this out for e-signature, download it to my computer, put it in as a Salesforce file, log an activity or don't. Um, I like to think of it as like garnishes almost for how you present your final result. Um, and there's some nice ways to do it inside of the platform now. It used to be that you had to like know the codes and type them in, but now you can click this button and you'll see that there's kind of a, a menu of parameters. And so I can just go down here and say, okay, let's, let's look at data gathering parameters. I don't know. I don't know what these all are going to do. Um, and if you click one, then um, you can see it'll appear over here. You can see some information about how to use it and what kinds of um, like codes it will accept. Um, and then you can click a button up here to add it to your solution. So I'm hoping that this will help you think as you're building a solution, you can use the recipe metaphor and the food toys and the hair clips that I was going, I was going for a theme um, to uh, be able to customize the unique sauces, flavors, and ingredients of your conga solution and be able to present it with all of the finesse that you need or all of the shabbiness that you like if you want to export something and then work on it a little more before it's in its final form. So enjoy making your conga solutions and I'll be back soon with another video. I'd love to hear from you on social media or YouTube if you find these helpful or if there's any questions that I have not addressed. Thanks for watching. Bye.